Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the GMC Astro 95 tractor. It's AMT kit number 1140 in 125th scale. It has about 250 pieces with an intermediate skill level and the pieces are molded in white, chrome, clear, clear red with black vinyl tires and water slide decals. The instructions are pretty nicely laid out and when you're done with the kit the dimensions will be about nine and a quarter by uh, length by four and a quarter width and five and a half inches high. Now this kit has been re uh, released in a number of, of uh, versions. Here's some of the um, uh, versions that I picked up off of uh, various locations and uh, sources but um, it's been re-released again and that just shows you how uh, how good this kit is and how um, what good standing it has with modelers because they, they keep releasing it and people keep buying it it's a nice clean look especially with the two-tone paint here uh, and all the bling that surrounds it um, and everybody seems to enjoy putting this kit together it's um, altogether not that difficult uh, a build and it's just got a lot of pieces so we'll show you what uh, what to look for and how to do it here's the layout of the kit and as you can see there's quite a few pieces uh, and it comes with a nice set of decals but um, I, I thought that um, uh, mine would pop a little bit better if I showed off the features of this kit with a two-tone paint so uh, I, I did not use the decals although the register looks good on them and I'm sure they're of good quality um, so they're obviously uh, very usable now we'll be using uh, liquid cement for the most part sometimes super glue for strength and and white or crystal clear glue for uh, you know window pieces uh, but always remember to heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products that you see or hear uh, used in the review instruction starts with the engine block um, so we're going to take those pieces you see and uh, we're going to assemble those with some liquid cement and uh, they go together in the normal fashion um, you know obviously you just uh, attach the cylinder heads to the um, two you know block halves that were uh, assembled and then uh, you paint that a, um, I used a, a Dupla Colors Detroit Diesel Alpine Green for this now we'll have you uh, go ahead and find the uh, these pieces out of the kit now the chrome plated and we're going to put them in a bleach bath here in just a minute and uh, then paint them but for uh, mock-up and uh, demonstration and position we'll show you here uh, as they're chromed that where they go so um, add the uh, oil filter attached to the right valve cover and then uh, that assembly in the left uh, and the oil cooler they get uh, later they'll get sprayed with the uh, alpine green engine paint and then attached to the engine but the left manifold and the right manifold they're painted uh, semi-gloss black and then attached to the engine now here we show you uh, you know some of the close-ups but uh, in this view you can see you know the the black uh, pieces uh, attached to the engine and the semi uh, green uh, that uh, we painted earlier. We use these uh, supercharger pieces and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, remove the uh, chrome plating in a bleach bath uh, and then once that's cleaned and dried we're going to paint those with the, uh, uh, the Detroit Diesel green and then uh, we're going to attach the, um, the lower and the upper sections together and then the rear section and front uh, to the supercharger assembly and then the governor gets uh, uh, installed onto the front of the supercharger assembly and then that whole thing uh, is attached to the engine on top there. I'll work with these pieces next um, and continue mostly in the front of the engine. Now the uh, water connections, the fan mount and the water pump are um, stripped and painted green and the fuel filter, air conditioner pump and the fan are painted semi-gloss black. Then the fan pulley gets painted uh, flat black, you know, the belts, and then semi-gloss black for the pulleys. The water connections, fan mount, and the water pump then are attached to the engine assembly, and the fuel filter gets attached to the water connections. Now the air conditioner pump and fan are installed uh, to the fan pulley, and then that is uh, placed on the engine assembly in front. We'll stage these pieces next, and again, we're going to remove the chrome from the chrome pieces, 
and the supercharger drive case halves are then assembled and the air compressor halves, halves are put together. Now the uh, pulley cover gets attached to the alternator and that assembly is attached to the supercharger drive case assembly. Now the air compressor assembly and oil filler tube are attached to the supercharger drive case assembly and the supercharger drive case assembly then is also sprayed with the uh, Alpine Green and the supercharger case assembly is installed onto the engine. The transmission oil filter shown here gets attached to the uh, rear of the transmission plate and then that assembly is sprayed with the uh, Detroit Diesel Alpine Green. Then the transmission rear assembly gets attached to the engine. The engine assembly dries. We're going to turn our attention to the wheels uh, and wheel assemblies. And both front wheels get painted gloss black and then the front wheel uh, is installed onto one side of the tire while the front flange uh, is installed into the other side of the tire to trap it and then attached to the front wheel. Then you repeat uh, the step for the other front tire. Now on the uh, rear sets of tires here, the dualies wheel uh, now on the uh, rear sets of tires here, the dualies wheel uh, clean up the flash. You'll see you see there's some flash in one of the rims there inner halves uh, and we're going to paint the spiders and the hubcaps gloss black and then assemble the tires with the inner and outer trim ring flanges there uh, and the second wheel installed onto the back side of the first um, but um, they go together pretty common sense uh, wise and um, they can be put together uh, in just a short fashion here after the paint dries on the inner portions I'll go ahead and find these parts in the kit and um, this is part of the ladder frame of course and we'll be using the front cross member and the transmission supports and attach those to the right side of the frame and the two mid cross member halves are then assembled and installed onto the frame's right side. The track rod cross member halves are also installed onto the right side. Now the rear cross member is attached to the right side and the left side of the frame is attached to the front cross member, transmission support, the mid uh, you know, cross member assemblies, all those units that have already been attached to the right side. Now one of the anti-lock wheel and brake control valves, number 66, gets attached, uh, attached to the interior side of the right frame between the transmission support and the mid cross member assembly. The second one is attached, that's part number 67, attached to the interior side of the left frame and it gets uh, in the same place between the uh, track rod cross member and the rear cross member. Now the engine supports attached to both frame sides by the transmission support. The um, uh, trademark stamp there for uh, on the side of the frame rails uh, can just be um, you know uh, scraped off with a blade and then sanded smooth if uh, you want a nice clean look. The uh, front spring assemblies here, uh, uh, sub assemblies, uh, can be attached to the frame left and right sides. Uh, and I've used super glue for most of the suspension pieces on a frame just for strength. And once that's done, you can paint the entire unit uh, gloss black. Pieces from the kit: the steering unit, the idler arm, pitman arm front axle tie rod, left shock and right shock, and they get painted gloss black too. Now remember to scrape off any paint uh, or chrome plating when you want to join pieces together for a good bond. Uh, so once the uh, paint is dry, we're going to um, uh, the front attach the front axle to the frame assembly and then the tie rod gets attached to the front axle. Now the left shock is uh, applied to the um, left front spring on the frame's left side and the right shock is attached to the right front spring on the right side. The steering unit then can be attached to the left front spring and the idler arm gets installed on the steering unit. Now the pitman arm is attached to the idler arm and the front axle. These parts will get painted uh, gloss black except for the uh, stub axles and that means stripping the chrome off the smaller parts there. Uh, the uh, brake cylinder and the air brake bracket. And then the front uh, air brake cylinder is attached to the uh, bracket and then the air brake assembly gets attached to the front backing plate. Then the plastic stub axle is installed into the front backing plate there and you repeat that for the assembly on the other side. Now finally uh, the front tire assemblies 
can be installed onto the front backing plate assemblies on each side. Gather up the uh, rear springs, the leaf springs and the rocker beam pivots and they get uh, painted gloss black. And then uh, we're going to attach the right uh, spring to the right side and the left to the left. And the rocker beam pivot then is attached between the two springs. Pick up these parts uh, for the rear axle halves and differentials and uh, paint those gloss black. Uh, and then uh, we are going to uh, take the front differential assembly and attach that to the rear axle assembly. And then the assembly is painted uh, uh, again uh, gloss black and attached to the rear spring assembly. Now the rear axle halves are assembled and painted gloss black and attached to the rear spring assembly. And the front track rod, the rear track rod and the inner axle shaft can be painted black as well. Now those um, are then uh, attached to the rear axle assembly and the uh, track rod cross member and the rear track rod is attached to the axle assembly and the cross member. Now the inner axle shaft is installed between the front rear axle assembly and the rear. Get these pieces out of the kit but keep the parts um, uh, separate and identified because uh, they need to be correctly installed in the right a place so uh, both backing plates number 111 and 227 and the four air brakes and the uh, brackets there are painted gloss black and for the front rear axle assembly the air brake gets attached to the air brake bracket number 207 then that is attached to the backing plate number 227 now you repeat that for the second second backing plate uh, that's the number 227 one assembly. However, uh, make sure that the air brakes installed correctly. Now these assemblies are installed into the front rear axle assembly with both air brake assemblies facing the front of the frame. Okay, the front of the frame assembly. Now for the rear, uh, it's basically the same part numbers uh, air bracket 208 and then the, the bracket then is attached to backing plates 111. So repeat that for the other side. And then the assemblies are installed onto the rear axle assemblies, uh, both air brake assemblies facing the rear of the frame assembly there. Now we'll use the, um, the metal axles and one gets tapped uh, gently into one of the rear tire assemblies and then slid through the uh, holes there for the axles. And then you just squeeze the uh, other tire assembly on the other side and do the same for the, um, the other unit. Uh, either the front or back, whichever one you start with first. Locate the front drive shaft and paint that gloss black. When it's dry, the engine assembly gets installed into the frame and simultaneously we're going to place the front drive shaft and install that uh, between the front axle and the engine. Opted for the single exhaust version and for the uh, that you'll take the stack support bracket, the exhaust pipe and the uh, exhaust crossover and paint them a gloss black. Then the air filter stack halves are assembled and painted silver. Now the muffler and the exhaust stack can be assembled before they get painted silver. The stack support bracket then is attached to the right side of the frame and the air filter stack assembly is attached to the support bracket and then the air filter cap is attached on top of the uh, stack assembly. Now the muffler exhaust uh, stack assembly can be attached to the air filter stack assembly and then the exhaust crossover can be attached to the engine support, the left exhaust manifold and the right exhaust manifold. Now the single exhaust pipe can be installed between the exhaust stack and the crossover. Again for the single exhaust version the air filter bracket uh, here will be painted gloss black before it's attached to the right side of the frame and then the air filter halves are assembled and attached to the air filter bracket the air intake can be attached uh, to the uh, filter assembly and also the air filter stack assembly. Now the air outlet tube halves are assembled and then installed into the supercharger and the air filter assembly. This was the round fuel tank version for my build. So we're going to take the fuel tank uh, halves left and right, uh, assemble those and then uh, install them into the brackets and then add the end caps on to those. Now the left fuel tank assembly then can be painted uh, silver or chromed and it gets installed into the uh, you know the rear fuel tank bracket, the center fuel tank bracket and the front fuel tank bracket. 
Now, the uh, large air tank then is attached to the left side of the center fuel tank bracket and the chrome air tank attached to the frame's left side. Now, we assemble uh, the uh, right half fuel tank uh, into the bracket and then the left uh, battery box bracket and the right one are attached to the, the battery box's bottom half and the batteries are installed into the uh, bottom and top half then is attached. Then the battery box assembly is attached to the frame assembly. Get these pieces out and the um, uh, including the bumper and the radiator uh, pieces and then the radiator stone guard, the bumper gets attached to the front assembly uh, of the frame first and then the uh, radiator stone guard attached to the bottom of the bumper and then the radiator halves which are listed as the uh, supercharger drive case halves then are assembled uh, and painted uh, gloss black before the assembly is attached to the frame. Now the radiator hoses are painted flat black and attached to both sides of the radiator and the water connections on the engine. The shift tower is painted uh, gloss black and then attached to the left side of the frame by the shock there and the shift gate can be attached to the shift tower and then the shift lever finally installed onto the shift gate. We shift to the back of the ca uh, tractor here and the tail light bracket the license plate the uh, left and right mud flaps the, and both of the cab support brackets and both bracket supports are then painted gloss black. Now the tail light lens is installed into the light tail light bezel uh, and use uh, some clear part cement there or white glue and repeat that for the other tail light. Now the uh, tail light bracket can be attached to the frame and both tail light assemblies and the license plates are attached to the tail light bracket. The left and right mud flaps are detailed with some flat black before they're installed uh, onto the frame. Cab support bracket then is attached to the bracket support and this is done twice and then the bracket support assemblies are attached to the frame. A close up uh, that will show both bracket support assemblies uh, so that they can be seen attached to, to the frame and their positions. There's an instruction here uh, that affects this uh, section. So uh, they, they say to use air tank number 64, but we've already used that uh, in a previous assembly here. But there's an extra tank number, part number 214, that can be used uh, in that place. So the air tank slide plate, fifth wheel carrier, and fifth wheel then are painted gloss black. And the air tank's attached to the right side of the frame, and the slide plate is attached to the frame assembly. Now the fifth wheel carrier is attached to the slide plate and the fifth wheel then attached to the carrier. Um, no glues needed there if you want that to uh, be functional. If you're looking for a contest, nice smooth parts, um, you're not going to find them in this kit <laughs> because uh, there are ejector pins. It's an older mold uh, and here on the slide plate you'll find some that you'll want to maybe remove uh, if you have a uh, need for a really nice looking model. Um, here is the uh, interior pieces that we'll work on next and uh, I painted the bottom of the interior tub flat black and then the inside I used uh, a light gray and the front wall is painted uh, light gray as well and the bed gets painted uh, flat white and with some model masters sea gray uh, are the colors I use there and the front wall and the bed then are installed into the interior. Grab these parts and strip the chrome and then one dry we'll be uh, painting those um, flat black and installing them into the interior assembly. Those are the parts for the seats and I use the high back version here and the passenger seat base is painted uh, light gray and then installed and the driver's seat support halves are assembled and painted semi-gloss black uh, and then are installed into the bucket there and the right side high back uh, is attached to the uh, seat back and the assembly then painted uh, engine gray. Now the right seat assembly is attached to the passenger seat base and the left uh, high back seat then is uh, halves are put together and then painted uh, gray as well and when that's dry uh, the left seat assembly is attached to the uh, driver's seat support. Next we'll work on the um, instrument panel and I painted that uh, light gray and then detailed it with some gloss brown uh, for the wood tones, some silver, flat black, and some red and yellow for some of the uh, features there. 
The steering column cover gets painted light gray and the filler panel is painted light gray as well. And then on the outside, flat black. Now the steering wheel is painted a light gray and detailed with silver and semi-gloss black. And the CB radio gets painted uh, semi-gloss black as well. Now the steering column cover can be attached to the interior and the filler panel attached to the interior assembly by the passenger seat there. The CB and the steering wheel then are attached to the instrument panel and the instrument panel assembly is installed into locating notches in the interior bucket. Well, let's work on the cab and um, we want to remove any blemishes um, or sand off any flash that you find there. And then uh, you have to decide whether you what kind of lights, horns, and the rooftop that you want to use so that you can uh, open up the appropriate holes for those to be added. Now I sprayed the cab with some uh, gloss white then masked it off and sprayed uh, the, the bottom half gloss red. Then the uh, all the glass is installed using some uh, white cement uh, or clear cement. Install cab pieces here, the uh, open curtain, the right open curtain, then there's uh, sleeper walls on the right and left, and they're painted light gray and installed into the interior assembly. And there's a, also a closed curtain wall option to close off the lower section, but I didn't use that for my build. The exterior of the sleeper assembly then is painted flat black. Do some dry fitting to find out where the contact points are, then apply some glue and scrape off any paint and install the interior assembly into the cab. Grab the grill from the kit, scrape off the chrome plating where it will be glued into position at the contacts and glue that into position in the cab assembly. These pieces for the front end and the headlights then are attached to the bezels with some clear parts cement or white glue and then the bezels are glued into the cab assembly and the air duct and the clutch cover are painted flat black and then installed into the bottom of the interior. Pieces are next. The cab handles, the windshield wipers and the uh, they're attached to the cab assembly and the GM script there is detailed with some gloss red and then attached to the cab assembly and there's also an optional sun visor uh, but I didn't use that in my build. Up the horn pieces and lights here and we're going to um, uh, use the two air horn halves and assemble them onto the roof of the cab assembly and the standard lights uh, number 211 were used for this build so they're detailed with some turn signal amber in the front and attached to the roof and there's a painted uh, paired horn there and it had a different style uh, of fleet running lights that can be used for that. Now we can add the uh, handrails and mirrors etc. So the left and right handrails and the step plate uh, on both sides are painted silver and then the turn signals uh, they get detailed with some turn signal amber and the left uh, handrail, the left step plate and uh, right step plate and the turn signals and the uh, left side GMC symbol and the left mirror get attached to the left side and then an antenna gets attached to the left mirror then you do the same thing on the right side for those pieces. Look for the grab handle here and install that uh, on the cab on the left side. Use a little super glue to put that into place. Find the uh, left and right cab pivots here and paint those gloss black and when they're dry attach those to the cab assembly and while it's still soft install the cab assembly onto the frame and then uh, you can use a little, I used a paint can, can lid here to uh, support the cab in the open position until the glue on the cab pivots is dry. Once the um, pivots had dried, uh, it was apparent that the, um, the shift tower needed to be straightened up a little bit. So uh, I used a small pair of pliers, removed that, and then angled it almost uh, straight up vertically uh, so that uh, it would have a better fit for the cab to sit on the frame. So once I had gotten that into the right position, you know, I used some super glue to uh, put that back into place at the correct angle. As you can see here, there are quite a few optional pieces uh, left over from this kit. Uh, uh, the uh, options were uh, square tanks instead of round fuel tanks, uh, an airfoil for the top of the cab, uh, dual uh, exhaust instead of single, even seats. Oh, there you have it. This great looking kit 
uh, is a blast from the past. Uh, and the GM Astro 95 was a, a venerable workhorse on the roadways. Uh, a lot of fleets used them, and uh, they were pretty uh, strong contenders to get uh, th goods and, and things from place to place. You'll still see them occasionally on the highways or at construction sites, um, but as a model, uh, it's a real nice looking kit and it looks like it means business. It goes together pretty well. Even though the molds uh, are pretty old, you'll need to do a little clean up there, uh, but uh, everything actually assembles very, very well, pretty easily. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. We hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review from Right On Replicas. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on our icon in the lower right-hand corner of any of our reviews. Or you could see us on our Facebook page or website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.